Hello everybody, I am Ziggy, and we are back uh, with Pry Into The Void. This was, this is a RPG, and on the last episode, um, we gathered, I think, I think it was three monsters in our party. Um, see if I remember the controls. Yeah, so I'm playing as Joseph, and we have a fluffy bunny, a dumpkin, and a hungry bunny. So, two bunnies and a pigeon is the easiest thing I can say for it, at least. But, um, let's see. It looks like I came in through the upper door, so yeah, yeah. I didn't even see that hand sitting there. Okay, so this is another pigeon, so let's use ice on it. Oh, okay, so at the top I hit it with weak something that, oh, uh, I hit it with a weakness element, I guess. And at the top left it says I have an extra turn, so. But man, that seed was a good choice for me. Okay, uh. You know, I'm gonna go through and just start fighting all these things. Whoa, there's one I haven't seen before. Okay, so that's weak to frost. So I gain an extra turn there. Now it's the bunny, and if okay, so that's gone. What is this? An angry bird? Interesting. Huh. I gotta figure out what that is now. This is just a very strange RPG, but I am enjoying it. Okay, so with the pigeon... Okay, that gave me an extra turn, and then the bunny should off the pigeon. Now we have the hungry bunny, which I'm gonna hit with a wing attack. What is this? Raises defense of a party member. Okay, so that'll be good to keep in mind for later. Oh! Oh, sweet. I leveled up. Oh, and it refilled my health. Okay. Now that thing's gonna come after me. I'm gonna let it hit me, too. Come on, what you got, bro? What you got? I'm gonna go into the hand. You know, for as strange as it is, it is actually a lot of fun. I, I've always enjoyed RPGs of this style. Where it's like the turn-based combat, you have your skills, your special abilities, your healing. It, it, like an old Final Fantasy. I grew up playing old school Final Fantasy. I played and beat the original three, and then I played seven, thirteen, part one and two, and like fifteen or sixteen, and that was it. But I like the old setup like this. It's simple, it's fun, it makes you think, and that's why I like it so much. But it's a good thing I went to the extra effort to pick up the pigeon and the hungry bunny. Or the dumpkin. I'm gonna call it the pigeon. It's a pigeon to me. See, there's that fire thing again. My bunny. I have to beat it. I think I have to just beat on it until... Um, it reveals itself, I guess. Oh, he became comprehensible, so the next time I see it, I should... Next time I encounter it, I should be able to see it. And if that's the case, I should be able to make it join my party. Oh wow, I'm starting with the bunny this time, huh? Okay, so he's gone. He shouldn't... Oh, it was a miss. <laughs> the pigeon leveled up too. That's funny. Okay. Interesting. I'm gonna go through and fight everything. You know, I, I can't go wrong with XP. Okay. Hit him. 
When does my bunny go before Joseph? Is there some kind of... Like, um... What do you call it? Initiative order? Ooh! A rooster! Pigeon's gonna die, rooster's gonna join me. Wait a minute. Pry into the rooster. A young woman is packing, pacing back and forth. So you're telling me that you have to move out of town for work? You know I can't le leave my life here. I love you, but I don't think I can take long distance. I'm sorry, but either you leave this job or it's over. This move is a big opportunity for your career. What will you do? I'll stay. The woman is grateful that you chose her over your work. You work hard to build a grounded life together. Sometimes you... Uh, was it? Compliment? Complicate missed opportunities, but you don't regret your decision. Well, first time nailed it. Anjin? Whatever that is. I'm getting a lot of experience doing this. That's cool. Okay, so let's look up party uh, skills. Basic flame attack score chart grants, grants resistance to flame and weakness to agua. Okay. Um, info. It's a level one. I'm going to switch him with my Hungry Bunny. Yeah. And then, of course, I'm going to save because you never know what's going to happen. Oh, this looks like a boss arena. Hey, it's that shadow person again. You have done well to traverse the gardens in its current state. Standing before you is the tree of ended growth. There was once a time when it bore fruits which sustained life in the garden. It is now nothing but a husk and antique of an era gone by. Soon will be the time to make the world anew, and your role is to bear witness to it. Open your eyes and descend. Ah oh, man, flashbang. I'm going into the nothingness. I will become the Void Walker. The bottomless depths. Oh, that looks evil. Ooh. I'm gonna shut that mouth. Okay, so this is a demon, so I'm gonna have to... I'm assuming it's a boss battle, so I am going to hit it with all of my good stuff. Resistant, huh? Okay, what about wind? Okay, I got hurt by wind, and then we use the fire chicken. Oh, whoa, my bunny. My chicken. Hold up. Oh, that's right, he was resistant to that. Okay, so. No, only Joseph can use items. Defend. Huh. I can't escape, can I? No, sir. I have to pray. Ah, I missed. I'm dead. I'm dead. Oh, oh, okay. I woke in a fluster, my heart pounding in a... Man, 
I have a hard time reading simple sentences. I awoke in a fluster, my heart pounding in a rushed and shaken beat. I firmly grasped my neck, digging into the skin to top the air from escaping. I roll? Who knocks upon my door? The sound of wood drags me back to reality. I freed my throat from its stri strangle and allowed myself to breathe. What, were you choking yourself out? <laughs> you may come in. Oh, that's what I look like. Sweet. I have a maid? My personal housemaid. Oh. Marine? I'm gonna call her Mary. Enter the room. Employed by my grandfather after I lost my parents, Mary had been serving me nearly eight years. She was the closest thing I had to being a family. Good morning, Master Yosef. Are you alright? Your face is all flustered. Don't worry, Marie. Just a bad dream, that's all. A bad dream? At least that's what I told myself. If you say so, Master, please let me know if there's anything I can do. Will do, Marie. When you feel better, please come through the living room. I'll have breakfast ready for you soon. Thank you. With a little nod of a bow... Wait, hold up. With a little nod of a bow and a polite smile on her face, Marie left the room. I took a couple more breaths to regain my composure and calm my beating heart. With my mind cleared and breath steady, I followed after Marie into the living room. Is it Marine? Marine? I don't know. Anyways, um, that just seemed like a bad fever dream, apparently. So I'm kind of curious, it, it went away from, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Apparently all that was a dream, so I was dreaming about fighting chickens and rabbits and things with demons in a pit, and then I woke up. So, anyways, uh, Marine, ah, uh, you're up, master. Perhaps it's time for breakfast. What have you prepared today, Marine? Come look, master. Marine beckoned me over to the table with a suspicious smile. Even so, I followed her instruction, but as I approached the table, the lights turned off and the blinds shut close. Ah, it's a birthday cake. One by one, candles flickered into existence with the clicking of a lighter. Happy birthday, Master. Cake is fine for breakfast one day in a year, right? Oh, that's cool, man. That made it awesome. In truth, I haven't even known it was my birthday that day. It seemed Marine was the only one keeping track anymore. I noticed that the candles numbered 13, yet I recalled my age was to be 21. <laughs> I was 13 when I first met Marine, and I wondered if that was a coincidence or intentional. I suppose this is alright. Thanks, Marine. Make a wish and blow out, and blow out the candles, young master. In embarrassment, I smiled at Marine and leaned to blow the candles out. Marine prepared something for my birthday every year, but I had not. Oh. But I had not notched such a childish tradition in a long time. Without anything to wish for, I extinguished the lights with a lengthy and gentle blow. With the click of a button, the blinds flew open, flooding the room with new light. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. The maid remembered the birthday. Let's see. So if he's 20... What do you say? 23? So 23, right? And he, she's been in service to him for about 8 years. So if there was 13 candles, 13 plus 8 is 21. So my guy might be 21 if that's the case, because he said it might have been coincidence or intentional. It might mean something special to her, because it's been eight years. It's a new recipe. Please tell me what you think. Reem prepared a plate with a generous slice of cake upon it, paired with a small pastry fork. I took the fork and shaped a shape. A bite out of the cake as Marine watched with waiting eyes. Marine was known for not following established recipes, so I consumed the portion with caution. 
but even one that was picky for food such as I was surprised. This is delicious, Marine. This is your best cake yet. Really, thank you, Master. She held such a grin on her face that I complimented the cake. I couldn't help but be amused. Oh, that startled me. <laughs> that was loud in my headphones. A ring of the doorbell signified an unexpected guest, as most rings do, as not many people had a reason to come visit. Rain took off to attend to the matter, whilst I continued to enjoy my cake. He's like, go ahead and answer the door, I'm gonna eat this cake. <laughs> Who's this? A tall suit of man entered the room, he stood before me with the posture of a lamp post. <laughs> That <laughs> dude was stiff. The surprise guest was none other than Waltier, my grandfather's own personal butler. Pardon me for the intrusion, young master, and happy birthday. Please accept this birthday greeting on behalf of your grandfather. Unfortunately, he didn't have time to send you his wishes himself. I don't mind. My grandfather always has more important matters to attend to. Walter handed a small branded gift bag to Marine, assumingly a gift for me. Your grandfather is busy preparing for your appointments to the board. He has been rather excited talking about you to his associates. Please tell my grandfather to stop doing that. I already expressed my desire to stay out of the business. Your grandfather is only thinking of your future, young master. He wishes for you to finally leave this apartment and rejoin the world. He is still... Uh, he is still adamant about declaring you his successor. I never asked for any of that. Walter, I think you should leave. You already know that the young master feels about the matter. Please forgive me, young master. However, your grandfather really does wish the best for you. I shall take my leave now. Happy birthday, young master. Goodbye, Walter. Huh. So the kid, Joseph, must be some... I was born into a wealthy family, because apparently there's a business, and being that his parents are dead, the grandfather took responsibility of the business, because I'm assuming at that time, uh, Joseph wasn't old enough to inherit the business. And now that he is of... Now that he is, you know, in his 20s, he could inherit the business, but I think it was the depression of, of losing his family that made him kind of a recluse in the mansion, which is why the only person he trusts is Marine. At least that's what I'm getting from the whole situation. It just sucks that the grandfather couldn't make time to actually stop by and be like, happy birthday, boy, you know? Just showing up means more than having a gift, you know? Anyways, Marine showed Walter to the door, looking, uh, locking it aggressively behind him. She returned to the living room, wearing a concerned expression on her face. Are you alright, Master? I'm fine, Marine. I think I'll go take a breather on the balcony. Okay, Master. In the meantime, I shall clean up the tableware. Oh wow, sky map. What? Is he in like a a fancy apartment? Oh yeah, yeah. The view of the city from the apartment was a sight to behold. I found mindless entertainment and watching cars and people moving together as ants on the streets below. I thought he was in like some kind of mansion, maybe up on a hill in a forest or something. I didn't expect to be like a luxury apartment. I would do this for hours on end all to escape the isolation of the apartment even so I thought myself in a much better position than to be one of the ants down there at least that's what I told myself oh so he thinks he's all high and mighty but if you feel isolated just go outside I mean there's a there's a merry-go-round there there's probably a hot dog stand somewhere go enjoy life as frustrated as frustrating as it was to admit Walter and my grandfather were right I would wish for anything that would help me work up the courage to leave the safety of this nest. The apartment had been my cage for eight years. Eight long years. 
I felt trapped, yet still, I couldn't bring myself to be anywhere else. When I was just complaining to complain. Hey, it's the guy from my fever dream. <laughs> How is the view? Savor it while you can. There isn't long left for this world. You, you're the one from my dream. How? What are you? It's like a yin-yang, black and white. That's kind of cool. I am the creator of this world around you. Creator? I formed this world around a sprout with great potential. The sprout grew into a great tree bearing fruit which sustained all life. That same tree is now withering away and taking the world with it. The barren tree I saw in the dream? Then soon after that I fell into a dark space with a monster. Whatever that was, it was terrifying. You will have descended onto the depths of the void again. I'm sure you must have many questions. Don't be afraid to ask. Oh wow. The void, what was that monster? Why me? Okay, what's the void? The void is a space where reality is broken down into truths. Your task is to descend into the void and gather those truths. They will form the template for the next world. Okay, what was the monster? That monster is a truth that represents humanity. You will inevitably face that monster again at the bottom of the depths of the void. Only by defeating that foe can we recreate the world. Okay, why me? Fate has shackled me to you. I have no choice in the matter. You are the only one who can descend into the void. Okay. I'm sorry, this must be too much for you to handle. This is a responsibility too great for any human to bear. Uh, sure, I accept. Thank you, truly, from the bottom of my heart. It's about time for you to descend. Follow your heart, you know what to do. Oh, he's just gonna straight jump off the building? Later, brah. <laughs> my heart sways with you, Joseph. So he just straight jumped off the balcony. Pry into the void. Is that the end of this demo? Nope. Awesome. I descended into dark space full of rooms and twisting corridors. The cries of monsters could be heard all around. I feared for my life. Don't fret, my creation. I'm still with you. And so are the allies you made in the garden. We will assist you in your descent into the void. I suppose I have no other choice. I shall put my faith in you. Okay. Very, very interesting game. I'm going to save at this point because that was a lot of dialogue we had to go through together. Uh, save. Save. Anyways, um, yeah, a lot happened. Apparently, it's like a dream between worlds is the way that makes sense in my head. But so far, I'm really enjoying this title. Um... I think I'm going to cap it here for this episode, however, but uh, if you like what you are seeing here, then don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out, and it will allow me to basically provide you with more entertainment of whatever nature that may be. Anyways, um, again, this is Prime to the Void. There is a free demo available on Steam, and I shall see all of you in the next episode. Y'all have a good one.